Hey there, hunters, welcome back to the Gunner's Guild. We're still here in Monado discussing more Wild Hearts mechanics and meta stuff. Today, we're going to be revisiting the old question of raw versus crit versus elemental weapons because Grimstalker brought us two new weapons a high crit weapon and a fire weapon with some insane fire element on it. So, we're going to go back to damage testing and weigh the pros and cons of each of these weapon types with bow and cannon. But first, my sponsor. This video is sponsored by G Fuel. Cheaper than a cup of coffee, with more caffeine than a cup of coffee, you do the math. So today I wanted to conduct my tests on a volatile King Tusk, because it's easy enough to fight consistently, and I can effectively test raw, crit, and element all at the same time. So for both weapons, we're just going to be attacking the tail mostly, and for bow, we're just going to test bolster 1 explosions and bolster 2 explosions, because that's the bulk of your damage. For cannon, we're going to check out auto shot, mortar shot, laser ticks, and the laser final hit explosion. Now again, for reference, we're going to start with my old raw sets for laser and bow. The bow set here is going to focus mainly on stamina management for maximum uptime, but we can get a little bit more attack out of it by swapping around some pieces for some desperation. But here's the bow. I will be eating for some stamina food on this set, just pretty casual friendly set, no desperation stacking, no attack stacking, mostly just stamina management. So against Volatile King Tusk here, the tail, with the standard bow, we hit for bolster 2 explosions for 60. Occasionally, we get an 80 crit, but we only have 5% crit chance, so don't rely on that. Now, when we get enraged, I have 10% more attack from the Battle Spirit legs, so I do hit for 65 on a follow-up Bolster 2 explosion. And then we get the Bolster 1 explosion on Enraged King Tusk's tail for 56 with a 72 crit in there. Now, if he wasn't enraged, I'd probably be hitting for about 51 or 52, so we'll just use this as a benchmark. It's fine. Next, we're going to go over to the crit bow. All these bows have the same inherited skills, by the way. I thought about getting chain crit on this bow, but I just want to keep stuff consistent. Um, so this bow has 25% base crit, 20% chain crit, and an 8 for 12% crit food. So we do have good crit uptime at least. So back to Volatile King Tusk against the tail. With the crit bow, we hit the Bolster 2 explosion for 54 damage, but 74 on crits. Which should even out to about 64 damage if we imagine that we're going to be maintaining a 50% crit chance. Now, against Enraged King Tusk Tail, we're going to hit for 59, which makes sense, and crits were 78, so again, we're averaging about 69 damage. Nice. Now, Bolster 1 on the tail during the Enraged date is only hitting for 42, with 56 crits, so that's kind of lame. We're not running Battle Spirit on this set because this bow is a slashing type, so we have a Slash Bolster instead, so that's why we lost some damage there. And then for the lulls too, we shot Bolster 2 Explosions, King Tusk Face, which hits for 63, but also does the crits for 83, which is pretty good. But before we get into the elemental bow, I do want to point out something super important about crits, just for clarification. Crits in Wild Heart are not traditional critical hits that you're used to. How crits work here is that it's actually armor penetration, so you have a chance on hit to strip away defenses of the monster. And if you played Wild Hearts, you know that mighty, volatile, and deeply volatile monsters have increasingly more defense, so you hit for less and less. So crits are effective against volatile and more so on deeply volatile monsters. And it's a reason why you cannot crit the target dummy, because it has no defense. I bring this up because there's two things to know about crits. First is that crit damage, or how much defense you strip away, is based on the weapon type. So slower weapons have bigger crits, or strip away more defense on hit. Faster weapons have less, so crits can be skewed towards being more effective on slower weapons, such as hammer, nadachi, and cannon. The second point to make is that crits are definitely more effective against deeply volatile monsters, as you can see here, against this Hellfire Laharback. I'm not going to do a whole slew of tests against Hellfire Laharback just because of consistency issues, but you can see the difference here with just crit bow and raw bow. Crits definitely do significantly more damage on Hellfire compared to just raw damage. 56 crit versus raw bow's 32 is pretty huge, it's almost double damage. And I'll be honest, as you can see against King Tusk, Crit isn't even that good for bow, but you get the idea, crit's still really good against deeply volatile monsters. But let's continue on to the element side. So for the elemental setups, I'm eating for two spicy meats, which grant 15% increased fire damage, so 30%, which is huge. But that also means significantly less stamina regen. But either way, elemental bow against volatile King Tusk's tail, here we go. Bolster 2 explosions hit for 79 damage, huge. 100 crits, still rare, but yeah, big numbers there. And Bolster 1 against King Tusk's tail, not enraged by the way, hits for 65. So yeah, Elemental kinda trashes King Tusk. 
Now, against the face, again, just for the lulls, comparing it to the crit, Firebow hits for 91 on bolster 2 explosions, which, again, pretty nasty. That damage jump is insane. So with our three different bow setups, here are the damage numbers that we can compare between raw, crit, and elemental, and I just kind of want to draw some conclusions. First is that the raw bow is still pretty great, because without focusing on crits or element, you can get way more attack and stamina management and have amazing uptime. So the upsides are that you can scale other things like more stamina, or if you want, more defenses or situational buffs. For crit setups with bow, you're going to end up being about the same or average damage compared to the raw setups on normal monsters, but definitely better against deeply volatile monsters like Waharback. So it's very niche in that setup. But crit bow is definitely going to be lacking the stamina management to keep it going forever like the raw bow does, so that's something to keep in mind. So there is some cost to its usefulness. Now for the elemental bow, yeah, this is going to be damage king for sure. Assuming you're going to be matching elements properly, do note that King Tusk is 4 star weak to fire, which honestly doesn't mean anything to me coming from Monster Hunter. We have no idea what that value is or how it relates to a 3 star weakness and a 5 star weakness. But 4 stars seem like a good high end element dummy. So if you can manage the stamina, I think your damage you're going to get from element is definitely worth the trade off. And if we don't have an appropriate element bow to use against a deeply volatile monster, I would definitely fall back on crit. So when we originally did this test, I came to the conclusion that, hey, just stick to raw. But now, I'd say, yeah, each of the three types, at least here on bow, definitely have their uses and can be built around for certain situations, so that's kind of cool. Thank you, Grimstalker, for the new weapons, and I hope that monsters that are being added in the future have equivalently good weapons. Alright, so with the bow stuff out of the way, let's dive into cannon for their comparisons. Same target, Volatile King Tusk Tail. We didn't test cannon originally, because there was like zero reason to do crit or element before, but now we have much better weapons to try, so we're going to do cannon. Again, we're going to start with the raw cannon that I built previously. Rather than use the hot cannon, we're going to be using the high laser cannon that I built in that infinite laser video. This cannon is focused on maximum ticks. It does have chain crit on it, but that's pretty much a dead slot because we only have 5% base crit, so you can put literally anything else in there. I am also eating for generic attack food, so like 11% increased attack, but anyway, let's just shoot this pig. So auto shots against Volatile King Tusk's tail, 36 damage. Mortar shots against the tail, hits for 447. And then we get the laser ticks, 83 damage per tick with 116 on crit, which again, isn't reliable. And then the explosion of the laser hitting for 690. So this is gonna be our benchmark. Do note again that this cannon is meant for laser tick duration, not necessarily damage or heat management. Moving on to the crit cannon, which has lesser laser duration of time, but obviously focuses on crits. We ate for crit food here, so 12% crit and 5% attack meat. So normal shots against King Tusk Tail, hitting for 35 damage, but are critting for 48 pretty reliably. The mortar for the crit cannon hits for 439, which is nice since it's only slightly less than the raw cannon, and this wasn't a crit. I tried like five times and never got a crit, so sad face. But anyway, damage comparison, slightly less than raw cannon. But the laser ticks are hitting for 81 with 110 on crit, and that crit is constant. And then the final explosion is hitting for 677, but crits for 926. So crit cannon in general is hitting for about the same as raw cannon without the crits, shot for shot, but crits are much, much higher and stronger overall. And with crit food, our base crit chance is 37%, and with chain crit, we go up to 69%. Nice. And for the laser takes, each hit can crit and set up chain crit. So like, we're always having chain crit active, so that full laser tick and duration gets all that extra crit bonus, which is the real draw here. The crit is insanely good for cannon. And unlike bow, we don't really sacrifice much, like we don't need the stamina management or anything, we just lose some heat buildup or some laser ticks, which we can definitely adjust for. All right, so let's go ahead and test fire cannon against, again, volatile king tusk. And again, like Bo, we're going to be eating for 30% fire damage food. That's the good stuff. So auto shots against his tail are hitting for 50, which is a lot higher than everything else, even the crit weapon. And the mortar is hitting the tail for 620. Again, huge damage jump just by comparison. Not even a crit. And then we get into the laser. And Jesus, 116 per tick with a rare 153 crit in there and the final laser explosion is hitting for 973 non-crit. Yeah, elemental damage on cannon is pretty nutty. Now let's put this all together and draw some conclusions for cannon. First is that 
Yeah, Raw isn't looking so good here by comparison. Sure, it gets more laser ticks, but after doing the testing with the DPS on the infinite laser video, I know that more laser ticks doesn't equate to more DPS overall. So the crit and elemental cannons are looking pretty fire right now. Crit cannon is going to be my go-to for basically every deeply volatile monster, and I think most hunts if I don't have an appropriate element weapon, just because chain crit on the laser ticks puts in some insane work. And Elemental Cannon is going to be the Damage King, of course, if you can match the elements appropriately. So, final thoughts on Raw versus Crit versus Element? It's weapon dependent, that's for sure. So I do recommend testing your setup since each weapon has different Crit modifiers. For Bow, I think that Raw Bow is still kind of the bread and butter with stamina management because it's so important for Bow, so I don't think that's anything to write off. Crit is nice for deeply volatile monsters, but that's about it, and the stamina management is significantly worse. An elemental bow is great if we can match the elements properly. I'm worried again for the uptime on the stamina management for both of these setups, since they have to eat for other food and not that good fish. For cannons though, yeah, crit cannon again is going to be my go-to for anything not weak to fire. Fire cannon shreds way too hard for some reason. I don't know if like slower weapons also get more elemental damage, but yeah, we don't have very many fire weak monsters to test it on, but anything remotely weak to fire, I'm bringing fire cannon. I'm actually looking forward to more elemental weapons in the future though, just because of testing this. Um, but yeah, that's a bunch of information. Do with it what you will. Thank you all for watching. And if you want to talk shop about Wild Hearts or gaming in general, feel free to join my Discord in the description below. Thank you again to all my Patreon members. You keep me going, seriously. Uh, but yeah, thanks again and good luck out there, hunters. Peace.